Hello! In this video, we will be reviewing the JVP waveform. The JVP, or jugular venous pulse, is a clinical sign that allows you to measure the central venous pressure, or right atrial pressure. It is a biphasic pulse that can be seen along the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It is an important part of the physical exam when diagnosing and evaluating certain cardiac conditions. You can do this because there are no valves in your internal jugular vein. This allows a column of blood to track up as your right atrium contracts and relaxes. Here is the biphasic JVP waveform. The normal JVP consists of three positive waves and two negative troughs. Each of these peaks and troughs is represented by a letter. The first peak is labeled A, the small upward inflection is labeled C, and the next peak is labeled V. A and V are the pulses that are observed on physical exam. The first trough is your X and X prime descent, and the last drop is labeled Y. When the atria contracts, blood moves from the atria to the ventricle and puts pressure on the atria. This causes a back pressure that is exerted by the atria on the vein. Here is the IVC, SVC, and the internal jugular vein. When there is a rise in pressure in the right atria, this gets reflected in the SVC, which in turn is reflected to the right internal jugular vein. Thus, when the right atria contracts, you see a rise in the waveform, giving us the A wave. As the atria relaxes, the pressure drops and is reflected by the X descent. Right before the rise of the C wave, the tricuspid valve closes as ventricular systole occurs. The small notch, or C wave, represents ventricular contraction. As the ventricle contracts, it pushes your tricuspid valve into the right atria, increasing the pressure ever so slightly to give you a small peak. X prime corresponds with ventricular contraction. As the ventricles contract in systole, it drags the pressure down with it, causing a downward displacement of the tricuspid valve. This in turn decreases the pressure in the right atria. The V wave corresponds to the venous filling. When the tricuspid valve is closed, the right atria begins to fill with blood, increasing the pressure of the right atria and creating the second peak, or V wave. When the atria completely fills with blood, this generates enough pressure to open the tricuspid valve, allowing blood to pass from the right atria into the right ventricle. This is reflected as our Y descent. This gives you a big drop in pressure in your right atrium, and the cycle repeats again as the right atria begins to contract. To review, A corresponds to atrial contraction, X corresponds to atrial relaxation, C corresponds to the bulging of the tricuspid valve with ventricular contraction. X prime corresponds to the downward movement of the tricuspid valve with ventricular contraction. V corresponds with passive atrial filling. And Y corresponds with atrial emptying with opening of the tricuspid valve. To see how the biphasic pulse corresponds to heart sounds, here is the waveform in relation to S1 and S2. The first pulse is observed right before S1, the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valves at the start of systole, and the second pulse is observed right after S2, the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valves. Causes of elevated JVP include conditions that cause too much fluid, such as fluid overload from IV infusion, obstruction of blood before reaching the heart, such as SVC obstruction, conditions in which the heart is unable to push the blood out effectively, such as right ventricular failure, bradycardia, constrictive pericarditis, pericardial effusion, tricuspid stenosis or regurgitation, and other causes, including hyperdynamic circulation. I hope this was helpful for the next time you examine a patient's JVP. Thanks for listening.